Welcome to the penultimate round of the 2021 Kart Championship. Round number seven comes from Brighton Q Leisure Karting. Here are the results after round number six at Lid. I'm sure myself and John share the spoils of the victories. But my championship lead is still over 100 points and a good run today would secure the championship for me with one round to go. John has also had a pretty impressive season, a number of victories and really good consistency throughout, which just about keeps him in the championship battle here at the penultimate round. Greg is on 309 points, a little way back, and my dad is sitting on 196. The second half of the standings looks like this. George is 161 points, Mike is 152 points, Tom C on 96, and Jake on 56. The drivers for this penultimate round are myself and John. We're also joined by Mike once more, who's sitting there in sixth place in the standings. And also, Tom B is back in the championship after a one-off appearance in 2020. He's back for some more racing here at Q Leisure, a track he's never been at, which makes the fact he was on pole position within our group even more impressive. I would be second within our group, then would come Mike and John. A slightly tough qualifying session would line up 4th position within our group and 5th position overall. So back at Q Leisure, the slightly different format, so we had done a qualifying session. Tom, as mentioned, was fastest within our group, 2nd fastest overall. There was, I think, 12 to 14 of us out on track, so I think John was pretty happy to be 5th out of everyone out there on the circuit. But there's a long race ahead of us here. Double points will be awarded because of the length of the race. Anything over 20 minutes is classed as a full race or a double points race. So that's how they'll be allocated. Also points for getting pole position within our group, which Tom has done. And also points for the fastest laps in there as well. We'll go through that at the end. But we're ready to start this race here. 30 minutes of action round Q Leisure. So we're going... The drop of the green flag will start the rolling formation and then once we get round to the start finish line then we'll go for real so we're sort of going about half speed here as we're going through the last couple of corners we're on board here with john and as we get around this left hand kink here the leader will hit the throttle and lead once the flag goes there we go john gets a pretty good start here he's going to go by side by side with mike and he's actually got the move done Slightly catching Mike, napping there on the start, but doesn't get the best exit out of this corner here, which will see Mike go side by side with him. But that's really good to see on the attack straight away from John. He's looking down the inside once more on Mike, who hasn't driven around this circuit until qualifying. So John's got a little bit more experience around this track than Mike. But on the exit of the corner, after taking the tight line, John doesn't get a particularly good exit. So he's dropping a little bit further back. So on board with myself here, as mentioned, a fantastic qualifying lap from Tom to see him fastest within our group. And only a couple of attempts off the overall fastest person within this session, which was pretty good as well. Something that we all love about the Q Leisure circuit is the fact that the staff and everyone there is really friendly, really great choice of races and practice sessions. Today we went for a race. It's their 30 minute sprint race but you can do longer races and you can do shorter races and you can just do practice sessions. I think it is a great place to start karting and just go rental karting if you're in the Brighton area. And this is not an advertisement. I just generally love this track and the way it's run. It's perfect for getting up, going out, racing, enjoying yourself and then going back with a smile on your face. So you can see the leader is starting to pull away from us here. Now, Mike just behind me, He's kind of hanging onto the back of me, but after the first couple of laps, he's lost sight. And it would be the front three of us breaking away here and squabbling for this lead. But the big thing is for our championship here, Tom is leading our group here. So he's going to be taking the most points as the leader of this one. So I'm determined to try and get past him. And if things stay as they are behind me here with Mike in third and John in fourth, that could secure me the championship as long as I get decent fastest laps. So the leader is starting to get away here. Tom, very quick in qualifying, but possibly struggling a little bit to find the rhythm in these opening stages when the cart was a little bit colder than it would have been at the end of the qualifying session when Tom did have his faster lap times. 
And we've got an onboard camera with Tom here, and you can see this is a couple of laps later as we're starting to catch up with the leader here. So this is really good to see from Tom. He's getting back into that pace he had in qualifying. And even though I was looking down the inside there, that was just one of the corners where I was a little bit quicker. Tom is starting to close back in on the leader here, but the fine margins at the front of our little group here was actually quite impressive. The cap between the three of us in qualifying and in the race fastest laps as well was less than half a second. And I know within rental karting that maybe seems a lot, but considering the difference of people here, I think that was pretty impressive. Now, as we come down to this part of the track, I think this is where I'd say I gain the most time on Tom in front of me here. He takes the wider line through what we refer to as the tree turn when you loop around the tree. I think I was a little bit quicker through there in the early stages, but Tom digged a bit quicker as the race went on through that section. I wasn't really able to capitalise on what I thought was my advantage here. So, back on board with John here. Now, one of the other random drivers that was out there with us was putting a move on him, but John got the switch back on him. Of course, John knows the racing lines around here. He's pretty quick around here at Q Leisure obviously has mentioned that his uh, weight disadvantage has held him back a few times here so in the dry conditions that's probably even more the case but regardless he's got the move back there but he is starting to lose the time to Mike through this little squabble but I think John kind of realized the pace deficit to Mike in this round here today was probably big enough that the only way he was going to get past Mike is if Mike had an incident spun off or maybe even crashed so John was all about keeping it consistent having fun with the other drivers out there as well and trying to secure the points where he can do another switchback maneuver there as we get under the bridge Good stuff here from John. Definitely good to see him getting some overtakes in because sometimes he's slightly left on his own, not really left with much to battle with. But today he's right in the mix of it and he's still fifth place overall, which I think he should be pretty happy with. As I said, about 12 to 14 carts out there, so he's doing a pretty good job. So, on board with Tom now, you can see that gap to the leader has come down quite significantly. So we're going to hope to get past him here. And I'm just behind in third position in this overall pack. Second, as mentioned, within our group. As mentioned, only four people out there today in our session. That being myself, John, Tom, B, who are on board with here, and also Mike. But still, the pace difference going into this race we thought wasn't going to be that big but we did sort of split out into three groups somewhat this would be in the leading group with me and tom and this leading driver and then mike was sort of left by himself in no man's land and then john was battling with the the quicker random drivers behind him so it's good to see all of us within a battle i guess a little bit unfortunate for mike to not really be battling with anyone but he did get some lapping in towards the end of the race which i think he was quite happy about he also set some pretty good times in there as well so tom definitely improving through this section of the track here you can see where a couple of laps ago he was struggling there and he's actually now looking for the overtake side by side here and are we going to get the move stick not quite that was very close through there good respect between the two drivers but tom possibly getting a better run out of this corner is he going to look to the inside we're very close the leading driver just managed to cut off that advantage but slightly hampers his entry speed through here it's a hard place to overtake down here and as you go to that same place of track a few laps later we're seeing John once more trying to defend from the drivers behind so Tom went for the overtake but couldn't quite get that one stuck so now John very close to a driver behind here this is one of the random drivers we have mentioned before is he can look up the inside John's not turned into the apex so we can just see him there on the right side of our screen side by side through here not really an overtaking opportunity but Possibly a bit of contact there. We saw John take a slightly weird line through there. So I think John might have slightly been tapped there. You saw the back of his cart get a little bit loose there, which has been unfortunate. But as mentioned, he knew that his pace maybe wasn't quite up there today. So it was all about securing the points within our championship. But also just having a good time out there as he was having some battles, which was obviously the most important thing. So now Tom close once again to taking the overall lead of this race. He's going to look to the inside here. No, he did definitely think about it. There you can see he had a quick look to see where I was. But once more, a great run off this turn. And this time he's possibly got more of a car alongside the lead driver here. And he's got the overtake in there. Really nice, aggressive move there from Tom. He thought that the other guy might have died past him here. But no, that's not the case. And Tom's in the lead. And we're starting to lap people now. This is a couple of laps later. I see Tom's getting slightly bogged up behind one of the other random drivers. 
is it, which way is he going to go left or right it's, it's always hard to judge where the traffic is going I'm trying to look which way to go as well to be fair the the other drivers out there that were random to us but obviously had done some karting before were really respectful and there were some good letting people past situations and that was obviously really good for our little race here it didn't really affect it at all so Tom gets overtaken through that turn, but he looks to go for the switchback. Is he going to go for it? No. I think I was even saying, go on, Tom, go for it. Because I thought he was close enough and probably had a slightly better run off the previous turn. But unfortunately, it wasn't the case. He's having to slot back in. But we've seen in the opening stages, maybe apart from this corner right here where he's gone a little bit wide, Tom's got some good pace. Probably is right now the quickest driver out there. So let's see whether he can take back the lead of this race and maybe go in to win the race in his return to the series after quite a while. It's really starting to be an intriguing battle here because I think over one lap, Tom is probably quicker. But you can see as we're getting up to more traffic, which could obviously cause a little bit more drama as Tom gets a good run out of here once more. A little bit of leaning on from the other driver and he hasn't managed to get past there, but definitely seems to be that's the corner just after the tunnel turn that Tom's quicker. So let's see whether he can capitalize on this traffic. But I think he's got the pace, but I think the guy's currently leading the overall order is probably a little bit more consistent over, say, 5, 10 laps. So let's see whether pace over one lap can prove dividends for Tom here today. Dies past some traffic. He cuts to the inside here. I'm not sure whether he knows I'm there, but because of the battle that I'm in, I had to go for quite an aggressive move down the inside as Tom takes the lead back as well. So lots of stuff going on there. Nice move from Tom, capitalizing on the traffic to get an overtake in. And I got past the traffic probably better than the two in front, which means I've managed to close up to this battle. It's great to see karting this close, completely random to us, the other drivers around us, of course, except from Tom. Mike and John but I think some really nice fair racing out there which I think is really nice to see and I think that's partly what this track brings out in people because of the way it is and how professional it is in some areas so that's really good to see and the carts are really well maintained and oh that looked to be a move down the inside for the lead of this race but he hasn't quite managed to get the overlap here as I'm trying my best to hang on but if I'm being truthful here I don't think I quite have the pace of these two the only reason I'm catching or keeping up with them in this very moment is because they are battling, because they're trying to get past each other. I don't think over one lap I have the pace really to keep up with these guys. I think I got a bit lucky with that last bit of traffic, but you can just see here the pace not quite there for me right now, which is a bit of a shame because this has typically been a track that I've been pretty good at. So I can't lie, when Tom was faster than me in qualifying, I was a little bit disappointed considering he's never been at the track before and I was definitely feeling throughout the race I didn't quite have the pace of these two but at the end of the day I was in the battle here and I was keeping up with them and you can see I'm starting to look over because near the pit lane there's a little TV screen which tells you how long of the session there is to go so I was trying to gauge my efforts here but at this point you can see over the last couple of laps they're just quicker than me and unless they start squabbling I really don't have a chance against these two because they are just that much quicker they're so so close together in terms of lap times and I think the only reason I'm keeping up is because they are so close and they're trying to swap positions all the time as a ambitious move down the inside there you can see I'm maybe it wasn't supposed to be sarcastic maybe it looks a little bit like it but I was pointing at the driver that hit Tom off saying what was that in hindsight, I guess it wasn't that bad. Tom left a little bit of a gap and the guy went for it, but it was a little bit of a lunge. So he got a bit of a warning board for that, which I guess is fair enough, but it doesn't give Tom the position back. Now back on board with John. We haven't seen one action from him recently. He's been doing a, a solid race, but he's just let us three leading drivers go. Back on board with Tom here. He's looking to get past. That is not a place around this track you'd normally get an overtake in. So fair play for giving it a go. He doesn't quite get that one pulled off. But now as we go under the bridge, this is part of the track where Tom is quick. As we go into this fast right hander, Tom is pretty quick through here. Normally doesn't quite get the exit there of the leading driver. Now back on board with John here. So he's closing up on the group in front and it looks like he's about to do some lapping as well. 
I think he's battling with a couple of these drivers, but a couple of them he's also lapping as well. So a bit of a confusing situation considering they've all got the same coloured helmets and they've all got the same overalls on. He's probably not 100% sure who he's actually battling with here. So he'll do his best to get the overtakes in, but he won't be 100% sure whether the position or whether they're for an extra lap. So smooth driving here from John. As we've mentioned before, he's got some nice driving now. If you compare this to his first races in our little series in 2016, it was a little bit more aggressive. It was a bit more all over the place, but right now it's pretty smooth. It's pretty impressive and it's actually still getting quicker, which is going to be interesting going into the 2022 season. We'll see how close is that championship going to be. So looks like this is going to be an overtake for a lap I'd say here but then the, the drivers in front are diving back and forth on each other but there's going to be an overtake in here as one of the drivers gets slightly knocked out wide but is quicker around the outside I think that's the weight disadvantage John talks about coming into play right now even after getting punted off and a bad exit out of the corner he still managed to get a good run and once more not taking a particularly good racing line and then loses out at the end of the straight so through here John trying to get past this guy in the black helmet who I think is possibly slightly newer to karting than the two yellow helmet fellas just in front but he's not managing to get past through there as we've said not the easiest place to overtake down there through the tree turn because it's so tight it really narrows up through there only one real racing line unless you're being very very opportunistic and it's worth mentioning even though I upload these videos call it a championship at the end of the day the biggest reason why I organise these events are to just have some fun because I realise in the racing season especially we're doing a lot of filming, a lot of travelling, we're not really able to do this sort of thing so even though karting can be stressful and tough it's nice to still have these moments in the off season to, to have a good time. So John here gets really unlucky, a car in front spins, he does his best to avoid him but hits the hits the brakes and himself ends up in the barriers through none of his own doing so that's really unfortunate for John let's return to this battle for first within our group and first overall but that leading driver has gained some time on us and you can see here some fantastic moves from Tom three overtakes within the space of two corners that is pretty impressive stuff from him you can see the leader is just in front there as well but here a really unfortunate situation I say sorry to him and then I'm annoyed at myself so essentially I thought that he was letting me through and then he half spun in the middle of the corner and then unfortunately I ended him off I spun him around completely so that's somewhat put me out of position here that's kind of unfortunately left me to finish third place overall and second place within our group here you can see Mike getting lapped by Tom here Tom has also lost some time to the leader here you can see the gap has gone up quite significantly the gap's now about six seconds and I lost I think we worked it out about five seconds from that contact but to some focused head down moments over the next four or five laps saw me catch back up to Tom he would later tell me that he was starting to get a bit fatigued and struggling towards the end of this race so I was a bit surprised once I saw Tom here and he's later stages of the race once he slightly lost contact with the leader his lap times were starting to fall off now i did not know that i obviously was not thinking at all that i was going to be able to catch up to tom but he did struggle with his pace within the last 10 laps of this race it's a 30 minute race around a pretty intense track here at q leisure now it all is about i guess muscle memory and focus in these later stages of the race and i guess this is where i was able to use that knowledge that i've taken from the track over the previous few years of visiting it for our championship now i'm not saying it's much but i'd say that thanks to my experience around this track the later parts of this race were helpful and i don't think it was a fitness thing in terms of body fitness I think it was much more a mental game in these last couple of laps of this race where for whatever reason Tom was struggling to keep focused and his lap times were slightly suffering whereas I guess that muscle memory was definitely helping me in these later stages and look at this I'm actually catching up to Tom that gap was about four seconds after I'd punted off the other guy which I did say sorry for after the race as well but look at this 
Are we going to go for the overtake? Tom goes the inside. This is on a lapped car, so that doesn't matter too much. But now, I've got the overlap. Tom hasn't got the best run. I don't even have really any of my cars alongside here, but I dive in on the brakes down the inside. I thought, there surely can't be much to go in this race here, and that was the case. This is now the penultimate lap of this race. After 30 minutes of racing, well, just under, we're now battling for the win within our championship and this is now second overall after the leader has scampered off down the road so can Tom get past he's looking to the inside here my cart's kind of in the middle of the track I just have to turn in I don't get the best run out of this corner but Tom gets a slightly worse one so he's not able to get past here now I'm focused come on Alex hit all your apexes here and hopefully you've got the second place overall and the first within our group all secured you can see I'm going a bit defensive I was trying my best not to look behind too much because I think when you look behind too much you're kind of aware that someone's there and it's putting more and more pressure on your head so I think that was the last lap board we got there are we going to be able to hold off Tom here on this last lap of the race this is really incredible after what 28 minutes of racing it came down to an overtake just there just as we come up to the start finish line to go two to go and now can I claim this victory within our group? Now, it was a bit of a fight back, I can't lie. After punting someone off, I was a little bit annoyed at myself and obviously sorry for him. I thought, that's it, there's no way I can catch up to Tom, but thankfully for whatever reason, I was able to do it. Now, I had a quick look behind here because I didn't want to dive up the inside of this guy who were going to lap and have an incident with him and possibly lose it. But there we are. I wouldn't say the best comeback drive ever, but still, to come back after punting someone off, losing time myself, I was quite happy to get that late overtake on Tom. At the same time, I was a bit gutted for Tom because he had driven a fantastic race, taking the lead on a number of occasions. He had led the race overall a number of times, whereas I'd never done that within this one. So, fantastic stuff from Tom. I think he should be really happy with that. A really, really good result, considering he'd never been at this track before. So, what does this mean for the championship? Well, unfortunately for John... His performance today wasn't quite enough to keep him championship contention, even though there are more points up for grabs than normal at Bayford Meadows at round number eight. I am now unofficially crowned the champion of 2021 because, of course, anything could happen in the last rounds. So the steward could get involved and do some disqualifications, but let's make sure that doesn't happen. So the last round at Bayford Meadows will be uploaded to YouTube very soon, but there's the top of the championship. Let's also have a look at the second part of the championship. So Tom coming in, first round of the season, he's done and gets 96 points. That's pretty impressive, nearly as much as you can get there. Very close to the 100 points in a weekend, which is always an impressive goal to get. Mike, we didn't mention him much because he was in a race of his own, unfortunately, for the majority of this one. He would be one lap behind, I think, in the end, and he would... Move up to 152 points. He'll be looking to get into that top part of the leaderboard. See whether he can overtake anyone in this final round of the season at Bayford Meadows coming soon. Be sure to tune in. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.